All right, so you know who this is. This is John Chosmer with John Chosmer Reptiles. And take a look at these guys right here that he just recently produced. These are some baby boas. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to showcase some of the really cool hatchlings that he's hatching out right now during this season of the 2020 season. So definitely check us out and stay tuned because we have a whole bunch of cool things to showcase. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content. Getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. All right, John, so let's see, like, baby-wise and everything like that, what have you been really excited that you produced this year? I know you said that you were dropping a whole bunch of babies for boas and everything like that have already come out. So what do we got so far that you're really excited about? Yeah, I mean, it's been a good year. Uh, I've produced quite a bit. Some of the newest stuff that I've produced, these are uh, sterling boas. So the sterling is a totally patternless snake. Wow. These are also possible head for albino. Okay. You know, the breeding on these was a motley double head albino sterling to a hypo head albino sterling. So and I did the eyes, they like blend in with like the patterning. Oh, That's big time, big time. Huge, super cool. I don't, I mean, uh, Kim Baumgartner, or I, I mess his name up all the time, I believe produced the very first sterling motley. Okay. And the only difference from what he said is the, uh, the motley has really dark uh, dark eyes. Okay. So I personally don't think this is a motley, but it's just, you know, there's a fabulous, fabulous sterling. So now is this one of your like holdbacks or what do you think about this? This will be one of my holdbacks. Okay. Oh yes, future, so, future breeding projects for sure. Right, 100%. And the tail pattern too, like really distinctly different if you look at that guy too, right on the back. He just has like that jet black. It looks like it was dipped in ink. So this one here is actually a sun glow version. The, the tip wow. of the tail is much brighter. Yeah. So this is the albino hypo sterling oh my gosh and now when he gets older and everything like that will he kind of yellow out a little bit and a little bit more you think or you know you... I, I don't know i think the ones that i have and the ones that ken produced are the yeah. first ones that are actually born in the united states uh there is a gentleman over in the uk who produced them last year okay so i don't think there is an adult version of these yet. so be determined still to be determined gotcha i like that it has like the little side pattern it seems like a hint of uh, like orange almost like a, the coral, coral yeah like a coral thing. yeah it's really cool so that's just the albino version of the other sterling then correct awesome so img wise i know like a lot of people like in the past videos and stuff like that were really like asking like oh i want to see more of your img stuff because it's really intense stuff that you work with and everything like that so what do you got that was produced this year yeah i just had two two really good litters of imgs okay i'm still waiting on more to drop nice some, some of the stuff that i'm excited about yeah this one is a img hypo motley jungle wow and this is also 100 percent hit for call snow so it's hit hit call albino and type one anatheristic oh my gosh like going from like the front to the back of the snake it honestly looks totally different oh it's amazing like right, so this one's only had two sheds and it's already that dark yeah like it turns from like that brown to the bottom to like the melanistic like at the top it's crazy and the eyes on these guys are phenomenal oh my gosh just that jet black pattern too is really cool on these guys so the, so the motley versions of these normally turn really, really black. Right. The fact that it's got hypo in it, I'm not sure how that's going to treat it. Because the uh, hypo gene is obviously a lightning or an enhancing sure. gene. And the IMG is a darkening gene, so sometimes they fight each other. I've got adults of those that I can show you this year as well. Okay, nice. <clears throat> so some of the adults I got are the ones that you filmed last time. So this is a IMG hypo jungle, so it does not have the motley in it. Okay, so when you take that out, I mean... Definitely a different difference in pattern and everything like that in terms of like the saddling and right still keeps the bright and the right the, the IMGs getting the, you know, the the real crisp black around the edges mm -hmm. and everything still has the dark head the real real dark head spear but loses that blockiness that like the Motley will bring correct like that so correct I mean I still think this here will turn out really black as an adult mm -hmm. but may, probably not as black as the Motley version gotcha so for people that may not know or may not have seen like the prior video like what does IMG essentially mean. IMG stands for increased melanin gene. Okay. The melanin is what creates the black pigment in the snake. Gotcha. So obviously every time they shed and get older, the the, the, I am, the, the melanin increases. It's okay. More and more until it turns eventually it's almost solid black. That's really cool. So I mean, it's going to affect different genes differently. So like I said before, the hypo gene kind of fights it. Right, I was going to say it's a complete opposite of that. Right, the motley gene enhan enhances it. So I mean, when you add the jungle to it and everything else, it just it's just amazing what it can do. So yeah, I mean, you can get two sides of the spectrum depending on like what you want, either with like a hypo or versus like with an IMG where 
they'll kind of fight each other with those kind of things if you have them both together like we saw in the prior animal but right so this one here is also 100 percent het call snow okay now i've got another litter we can you want to blow that out this absolutely a aztec is the pattern yeah so this so <clears throat> there's as the aztec is an img aztec jungle 100 percent het vpi snow so Ooh, that's caramel yeah. albino and type one anathoristic. Wow. And then Aztec just kind of busies up the pattern and everything yes. like that. Like especially around like towards like the back of it and everything like that, you can definitely tell the distinguishing differences between that. So I, I mean, I've not, I personally have not seen an adult Aztec IMG, but I can only assume it would be black, almost like the uh, Motley version. Sure, 100%. And once you put the- Is that what you're kind of working towards then? Or? I am, I'm actually trying to work towards this and I want to add the Labby project into this. Yeah, like I was going to say Labyrinth, yep. So I'm actually working on another litter now where I should produce Hypo Labby's 100% head VPI snow. Nice. So I want to add, obviously add the jungle and the Aztec and IMG on top of that. Nice. Oh man, you're talking if about you're powerhouse. Getting, yeah, you're getting powerhouse. Big powerhouse animal. What's nice is I got the Hypo version of this. Right. So the Hypo version is a little lighter, but obviously it's still IMG. Okay. So this is the IMG Hypo Aztec jungle 100% head VPI snow. Wow. So it definitely made it a little bit lighter. Yeah, I mean, it looks more brown than it does blackish gray. Right. So the hypo, like I said, the hypo pull, the hypo does incredible things and lightening things up, but mm -hmm. it fights a lot of the other genes as well. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it takes away from different things. But I mean, obviously, I mean, for having the, the my goal in this with the hypo is to produce the snow glows. Okay. The, the IMG Aztec snow glows. Have you ever seen it before, where like it'll fight it enough where it just kind of completely confuses you in a spe like a, I don't know how to necessarily say it, but like completely fuses you in terms of like the patterning and everything I, like that I've, where I've produced babies before that have very little IMG to them yeah where it's like you know I, I, sorry, I don't know if that's an IMG or not and I'll hold on to them for three four out. five six months and then you're like oh okay that is an IMG okay and what's funny is a lot of them as adults they don't turn black right but they still have the, the, the iridescent hue a lot of the black speckling so there's more, more like a lot of freckling gotcha. but you know when I mean, you see something like that, people like some people don't want that. They go, I want one that's going to make black babies. Sure. Well, they'll still make the black babies. Just that one there just doesn't show it as much. Right. So I mean, it'll still create. It's what difficult to prove it out until. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you still got to work with it. I mean, I mean, just I mean, the blackest the blackest IMG can make black IMGs and sure. lighter IMGs. So it's a, a mixed match. You're not sure what you're going to get. Right. I mean, once you add the other genes, jungle, motley. Arabesque Aztec to it. Yeah, I mean, obviously that stuff's going to increase the black to it as well. So okay, it's just all, all what you want to put into it. I got you, but yeah, that would be a really cool powerhouse animal run. Without the pattern, I've got a plain IMG. Now, when I say plain, there's just nothing else visual to it. Sure, but this is definitely distinguishable. Definitely like. distinguishable the difference. Yeah, so you can definitely tell it is a normal. It's I mean, it's a normal looking boa. Right, but the fact that it's blacker, got the black hue, it's already got the iridescence. It's a great way to like compare and just show simply what IMG can do to an animal. Correct. When you're going baseline just to a normal boa and everything, I mean, like that, we, which I think is easy to tell sometimes, you know. Yeah, like this here. This is a younger litter, so it's a different litter. Okay. But you can see the total difference in them. Oh yeah. Day and night. So yeah, this one's obviously non IMG. Yeah. Normal non IMG, and mm -hmm. that one's IMG. Yeah, night and day so difference. It's a huge there. difference. Yeah, but still a really cool. Like, I mean, you can get one basically any pattern flavor that you'd want. You know what I mean? Exactly. I said that was the, the, the combination of endless, which you can add. To right, them. and then when you raise them up and everything like that, you said they just keep getting darker. Yes, I mean so that's got, a huge thing with the. I've got a, I've got a couple adults that are really really black. Yeah. So I mean I got some that are, and what's funny is the mother of both of these litters are not that black okay i mean they're they're black but the, the, the pattern fights them okay where the other ones i got as adults are completely black interesting so like how long have you been working with like the img stuff then this would be my fifth or sixth year of working the img okay so as, I, obviously I, i'm just now tapping into it right because it's been around for a long time mm -hmm. a, lot people, a lot of people are way ahead of me in the game but i'm not in a race i'm just doing what i want to do with it and, right so i've got a lot of combinations coming up yeah i was gonna say you're more laser focused on things that you prefer and everything like that and we've had a whole conversation on that before where you're more so passionate about like what would you enjoy making and everything like that so and that's the thing in this hobby people that i realize you know I mean, I get calls all the time, people asking, hey, what should I breed to this? What should sure. I breed to that? And, and the simple answer is breed with and produce what you want to produce. Right. Because in the end game, if you're producing stuff that I'll tell you that I like, yeah. when you produce it, you're going to open drawers of stuff that you don't like. Sure. And you're like, why do I have this? Whether it's worth money or not. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm producing stuff that I like. And I mean, once I enhance it and do more stuff with it, you know, I'm hoping to draw the people towards the dark side. Yeah. The dark side is what I like. Yeah. 
No, that's true and everything like that. I mean, at the end of the day, you're the one with the babies at the end of the day. So exactly, exactly. You're investing into them. So, I mean, that's a huge thing. And, I mean, you got some amazing babies from it, and the payoff is incredible. So yeah, Let me show you these two here. Pull these out and show them to you side by side. Sure. This is a line of jungle I'm working with. So one is obviously a jungle. Yeah. And the other one is a sunglow jungle. They're just the patterns on them are so sleek. Oh, they're just clean. Very, very clean. But no, I mean, yeah, definitely can tell. How long does it take to get like such a lineage? Of... I've been working with this lineage here almost 10 years. Wow. I mean, I haven't proved out everything I want to prove, but I'm still working on it. Right. But just the way all the saddles connect on these guys. Yeah. No, that's tough the, to come by. The tail by. is I mean, so bright. You can't beat that. I, bl I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this has some Peruvian blood in it. Okay. So, I mean, I'm still working to prove all that out. Now, what would the Peruvian blood necessarily do? The Peruvian, and I, from what I'm saying, I'm, I'm thinking it's getting the lighter, brighter tails. Sure. Because the Peruvian blood, are, you know, Peruvians are the true red tails. They're the bright, yeah. bright red tails. Sure. You know, a lot of people when they see Colombian, they always, I mean, the newer people in the hobby want to say Colombian red tails, which in reality, that's not a true term. Right. You got your Colombians and you got your true red tails, which are Guyana, Suriname, Peruvians. So the Peruvians are going to give it the brighter red. So gotcha. I've been tracing this back through another buddy of mine who I originally got some of my stock from. And we're just, again, we've been working on it for years trying to figure out where it all came from. <clears throat> and we believe that one of the guys originally did add Peruvian to it somehow. Okay. So, I mean, again, I'm not guaranteeing that, but just by the colors and the way that it enhances, I'm thinking it's got Peruvian. It's only something that you can tell through time. Right. So we're working on it. Okay. More stuff to figure out to come. Right, yeah. I mean, that, that's what keeps it interesting in the hobby, you know? Exactly. Wow. So this is an IMG Ghost Jungle. So it's IMG Hypo Anatheristic Jungle. Okay. So not a super jungle or anything like not that. Not a just, super jungle. Okay. That's pretty that's pretty cool though. I mean it makes it like a darker gray, not too like overbearing or anything like that, but Right. The uh this litter here, the mother was actually a ghost jungle sure. IMG. So I mean when, when I show you her, we'll show her later on. Mm -hmm. The uh you'll see where she's she's black, but she still has that hue where you can still see color and pattern and everything underneath of her. Gotcha. So she's not solid black. Interesting. Now would you say IMG is like the more one that you would like more so prefer? Or like what what, what would you say is like your favorite of all like color combinations uh, working with this for so long i'm a huge fan of the dark side yeah i mean nothing against the albinos mm. and stuff like that i mean i produce hundreds of them a year i love them yeah but i like the dark stuff and the reason i like the dark stuff is because i mean obviously you know we, we're in this hobby to sell babies and sell babies they look great yeah. some animals as they mature and they get older they kind of fade out the sure. color fades out like um, a lot of your albinos will turn like a yellow or the, the orange kind of disappears. Versus the white or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. So with, with, the, with your, with your anries and your jungles and stuff like that, that en enhances the color. So even as a dark snake, whether it be a motley or, or uh, just a red anry or whatever, they still stay dark as an adult. They're, sure. not, they're not changing. Gotcha. So and that's one reason I like the dark stuff. So my favorite combination right now is probably the IMG motley. Nice. You know, I, mean, I love it. Um, I mean, one of the, one of my holdbacks was I produced a uh, Anri Jungle IMG that's just phenomenal. Sure. You want to share that one? Yeah, absolutely. I was definitely favorite. about to say if you have it. So this is an Anri Jungle IMG. Wow. I mean, just you know, Anri IMG, mm -hmm. and then the jungle's enhancing it. Yeah. But I mean, just it's just black. Right. And from the head to the tail. So this this would be one of my holdbacks this year. I was definitely going to say. I mean, this would definitely be something to raise up. And this is a male or a female? This is a male. And what's funny too is everybody wants males. And I understand that because you know, obviously males can breed younger Mature, females. Quicker. But I mean, I I've i got three litters on the ground of these and I'm super female heavy. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I'll hold on to females yeah. all day long. Because it takes how long for a male and how long for a female? F males, I mean, you can breed males as young as 18 months. I like mine between two, 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 two and a half years. Sure. Uh, females, you're looking at I tell everybody minimum four years. Sure. I mean, you can breed them younger, but I don't think it's good on the field. Yeah, it's not health so, from a health ben uh, ex side of things. Exactly. You're better off to take the time, you know, and grow them slow and get a good healthy litter out of them. That we, because I mean, the, once once they reach four or five years old, they they tend to bounce back a lot better. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because some people like think they should just get in this hobby and just rush production. Yeah, you I know, mean, and that's not something. It's not quality 
keeping, right. and it's not quality for the animal. Yeah, it's not. I mean, you know, boas in general. You know, I mean, some some people power feed. You know, pythons. And pythons right. can digest fat stuff fast and easy. Sure. Or boas can't. They got a little bit of a slower metabolism. Right. So you're better off to grow them slow. Because if you grow them fast and power feed them, you're gonna shorten the life of the animal. Yeah. I mean, the animal in general, they're designed to breed. Yeah. But I mean, you know, when you breed them, you're shortening their lifespan anyway. Oh yeah, drastically. And then, and then if you power feed them, you're just shortening it even more. Yeah. So I mean, it's not worth it. You better take the time. If you're in this for the love of the hobby, you're willing to take the time. Right. 100%. Which you definitely are, and I mean, your facility shows it too. I mean, the cleanliness, everything like that, and just what I mean, it, the payoff too. You know, I mean. You definitely get excited for waking up and like coming in here to see like Dude, all I'm, the things that you've been working to do. Man, I'm excited to come down here and just open drawers and see what I have. Right. And that's why I tell her. That's why it goes back to the whole. What do I want to breed? Yeah. You know, if, if you don't, if you open that drawer and you're not excited to see it. Sure. It's not for you. No. You know, you need to be. You need to come down here, whether you know you open the drawer the day they're born or nine months later. You have right. the same excitement since day one. Since day one. Hundred percent. And, and it keeps continuing to grow. And I mean, it also to continue like learning too, you know, I mean, exactly. like, not everyone knows everything, you know, I mean, the wealth of knowledge that everyone shares and everything like that. I mean, it's good to like grow it and share it with everyone else too and see what you can learn as well. Exactly. No well, one can ever be an expert on it. No, we're all learning. Right. Yeah. Things change, everything like that. This is a Paradigm Motley. Gotcha. So this is a motley. It's kind of like a honey co color to it. Yeah. So this this is a visual double hit. Okay. So it's it's hit for a sharp albino, and hit for a boa woman caramel. Okay. So both those genes, the boa woman caramel, which is the T positive albino, and then the sharp albino, which is T negative albino, both those genes fall in the same allele. Gotcha. So theoretically, you think you get a normal looking snake that's double hit. Right. But this one here, because they fall in the same allele, makes it a visual double hit, and then you got the motley on top of it. Nice. I like how like the saddles on this guy is like a goldenish color to them. Yeah, these look hot as adults. Yeah. And again, this is one of those animals that, you know, it's it's not a bright animal, but sure. it's not a dark animal. And as an adult, they look just as phenomenal as they do as babies. Interesting. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're into the snow projects. It takes the dark stuff to help create the white snow. I see. So, so I got I push the dark stuff. <laughs> Which is Huge really cool. For the dark stuff. No, really cool. Now, in terms of like the, you were talking like the labyrinth stuff. I wanted to see some of those things. If you had any. I do. This is a hypo labyrinth. 100% het sterling. Oh my gosh. And this was born when? 2018 baby. Okay. This one here was actually produced by Jeff Ronnie himself. So what does labyrinth essentially do to the pattern for well, some that don't know? The, the labyrinth, uh, which, means, which means maze or, or maze pattern, yeah. you know, breaks the whole pattern up. It's almost like a jungle type, mm -hmm. but I mean, they're, I mean, they're all different. Um, one of the other ones I'll show you here in just a second. I mean, it just shows you more of a chain link type pattern. Okay. So, I mean, that's the, the, la the, la the, the labyrinth is the pattern. Right. So the hypo, the hypo in here is enhancing it more, so it's pulling some of the pattern out. The other one I'm going to show you will show you more of it without the hypo gene. So this is a regular labyrinth. Gotcha. As you can see, it's got the more the stripes, the chain link pattern going down the body. Sure. The enhancement, the nice cut, clean head. So the labyrinth is kind of like, I call it. I mean, I don't want to refer to it as a jungleish gene, but sure. it kind of gives it the more aberrant pattern and everything. She don't want to strike at me here. <laughs> so, um, you know, it breaks it up. Now there is a super form okay. where, like in the jungle boas, you know, if you breed two jungles, you can actually produce a super jungle, which is a very aberrant pattern. But it's a weak gene. A lot of them don't survive. Really? Um, Why is that? Do you know? I, I do not know the reason behind it. It's okay. just, you know, it's just a, um, the jungle gene by itself is very strong. But when you double it up, it just it's just not very. It's, it's just weak. Jeff Ryan this year produced he produced uh, the super labyrinths obviously a couple years ago and he calls them the crystal boa so gotcha. it's, it's, it looks it's got the pattern of a labyrinth but it's kind of like a whitish pinkish color as well interesting he successfully bred one of those this year to prove uh, the super form is uh, viable okay so he actually produced a whole litter of labyrinths out of that so it's proved it is proved so it's one of those genes that you know right now I'm not interested in making the crystals eventually I would but I'm trying to add other stuff to it I'm trying to add the dark stuff to it. Oh, and, uh, that would be really cool. So Jeff actually produced a, uh, a Labby uh, anathristic this year. Sure. That So obviously he beat me to it, which is great. I mean, I'm going to have them. So sure. all a matter of time. Patience is key. So, so what do we got right here? So this is a litter we had born about a week ago. Okay. So this was oh a... My God. Yeah, there's plenty of them in here. So you've got albinos, I've got sun glows, I've got normals, I've got hypos. Oh um, my gosh. Obviously they're all a little darker, so they were, sure. just, they were just born. So... 
But they're all they're all nice and bright. Like how recently just born? Are we these talking? are about these are about eight days old. Okay. Eight days old. So they'll probably shed their skin in the next four four to five days. How long does a birthing cycle normally take? Uh, from the time of for the time of ovulation on the female, you're looking at about 124 days. Wow. The female will ovulate. You can you can count from the ovulation day, 124 days to give birth. But then also what, what most people go by is what we call the post ovulation shed. Sure. So after she ovulates, 14, 15, 20 days later, whatever it is. They will shed their skin because obviously they've swollen up, they're stretching sure. the skin to swell up. So once they shed their skin, the post ovulation shed, you can count down 105 days, and you're almost exact, give or take two or three days for birth. And like during like on the actual day, how long does the birthing process normally go for? If everything goes perfectly smooth, I yeah. mean, granted, I don't know how long the labor takes. Sure, the labor. But from when they start giving birth to the, from, the, from the first baby to the last baby, it can be anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, so they just shoot out. They spit them out pretty quick. Makes sense for that kind of buildup. Right. I mean, it's, that's another thing with the boas. You know, everybody thinks that, you know, snakes are all born in eggs. You know, a lot of snakes are born in eggs, ball pythons, stuff like that. But the boas are actually live birth, which is... Uh, they still have an egg inside. Right. And it's, uh, I'm going to butcher the term. That's cool. It's called oviviparous. Gotcha. So it's where the female actually, the female does all the incubating herself in the body. Okay. So the babies are in an egg sac. Right. And the mother holds on to them the entire time until it's time to give birth. Then she spits the babies out in and the egg sac out. and they pop out of the egg sac. Hence the, hence the term live birth. Right. Makes sense. But I mean, it's a really cool process though, you know? Like, yeah. It's one of those things you don't get to catch it all the time, but it's really cool to see it when it happens. And especially too, like you were saying earlier, like getting your females ready. I mean, it's a taxing process. Yes. It's I a mean, huge I mean, intensive process. And the thing like with, with a lot of your egg laying snakes, you know, you, know, if you figure they hold them to the eggs for 60 days and then they drop them. Sure. Then the snake and then the eggs are going to take another 60, depending on, the, depending on the species of the snake, it take anywhere from 60 to 150 days to hatch. Sure. Where the boa does all of it herself. And a lot of the females go off feed during that time. Yeah. So the re rebound of the bow is normally not as fast as like a python that drops its eggs, you incubate the eggs, the python bounces back a lot faster. So boas aren't something you normally breed every year. I mean, yeah, so. makes sense. But really cool though, I mean, just seeing the variety and everything like that, just in one like litter is incredible. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. How many did you say were in here? I don't there's know if you said. There's 20 in here total. 20 in here, oh my gosh. And on average, how much will like a litter have? Um, litters are usually in the high teens, low twenties. I'm, I'm tickled to death to get a high tie teen litter. I sure. Mean, that's perfect. Um, my l largest litter I've ever had was 42. Holy crap. Um, I believe Peter Call holds the record of a large litter. I, I want to say it was 74, 75. Damn. But the four biggest I don't really imagine four. the size of that girl. Oh, she, she had to be huge. <laughs> she, she had, had to be huge. huge. And that's the thing too. I've got females that are small. The girl that gave birth to this wasn't a huge girl, but she gave me 20 good babies. Yeah, I've had, I, up right. Correct. I've had females that are huge that'll be, be swollen full of babies. And I'll go, that's gonna be 40 babies. Right. And then I only get 20, but they're big babies. Right. Which is huge. That's a big difference there. Shows them nice and healthy. Right. 100%. All right. Who do we got here? So this, this is a really cool head pattern. This is an IMG Ghost Jungle Motley. Okay. So the, obviously the IMGs make it nice and dark. Mm -hmm. Then you have the pattern is the Motley. The hypo is lightening the pattern up. And then it's also got jungle in there as well. Just from everything you've showed me and everything like that as a highlighter, and I mean, you have more babies on the way. More babies on the way. I still have four or five litters, I think, still to go. Well, I mean, like I said, John, I mean, you have some really incredible stuff here. I mean, it's really cool just to see all this stuff and showcasing like all these cool babies that you had. I'm excited to see what you have like as the months go on and everything like that, because you said you have like a couple more or a few more litters coming out throughout the fall and everything like that too. Yeah, a few more still to come. That's that's really cool. So definitely, guys, make sure you check him out. I will leave his links down below. So send him some love. Make sure you see if you guys are interested in IMG stuff or any of his stuff, or if you guys have any questions whatsoever, make sure you hit him up. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you could do me a couple favors if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate it as well as check out my social media i'll be posting some really cool things there from today's video so definitely check that out it's always fun coming to john's place and seeing all the really cool things he does here and i mean like you said i mean this is a quality breeder that has some amazing knowledge so it's really cool coming to a place like this and seeing his what he brings to the table and everything like that so definitely check him out too and until next time i will see you guys soon